Hey guys, welcome to another Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. Broadcast around the world in the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in, uh, wherever you are out there in the world today. Thanks for taking the time to hang out with us. Rob from Cigar Federation here with you as always. Got a special guest host who don't get to hear any whining about baby puke and poop and stuff from Logan. Uh, we've got Seth from Seth Humidor here joining us today as our guest host. Seth, thanks for taking the time, brother. Absolutely, anything to help you guys out. So, and it's it's always nice to get Logan off the camera for everyone out there, isn't it? I mean, that's, yeah, that's just a positive. That uh, that's the gift that keeps on giving when he's not here. It is. I skyped with him the other day, and I was like, man, he is ugly. So, that's, I it just came to me. So, yeah, well, I say it all the time. You there, man? No? Yeah, you there? there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I went through and I was talking. I did all the intros, and then nobody said anything. Oh, no. <laughs> it, it froze, Rob. I think it was. It was yeah. system. I'm not sure if it, if it was me or what, but whatever. We'll start over again. Um, I'll just start over again. How about that? I didn't start the timer anyway, so it's actually it's kind of a blessing. Uh, <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com. <laughs> Broadcasts around the world, the Air Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are out there in the world today. Appreciate you guys taking some time. Uh, Rob from Cigar Federation here with you as always. We've got a special guest host. Logan's Ugly Mug is floating somewhere around the country. I don't even know where he is, but uh, we've got Seth from Seth's Humidor sitting in. Seth, thanks what? for taking the time. I appreciate it. What's going on, brothers and sisters? Thanks for thanks for having me. It's always good to be here. I think I'm just going to leave both intros in there. What do you think? Yeah, do it. It, I just, think... makes, it just makes the show a little more interesting. I want everybody to. I'm going to keep it real, and just tell everybody that I completely screwed up the intro to the show. So it's all right. Uh, we'll just we're just going to roll through it and power through. Um, you, know, you know, we can make this intro better. What's that? Introducing our guests. Good. I did that already, but everybody else was gone. <laughs> I introduced them to no one. Uh, guys, we've got Emil and Z from Cordoba Morales Cigars here with us today. Guys, thanks for taking the time to hang out. Hi. Thank Hi. you for having us. Thank you for having us, too. <laughs> hey, well, you guys are decked out. you got the banner in the background and matching T-shirts. It's almost like you knew you were going to be here. <laughs> yeah. Something like we that. we got some boxes back there with empty cigar boxes, and we put the, the banner <laughs> on top that's see that's behind the scenes stuff because that looks I mean this looks like you're in a studio, you're in the uh, the cigar uh, cigar chat traveling studio. Yes. Um, it's ready. <laughs> so we've uh, so Cordoba Morales. This was uh, I uh, was introduced to you guys at IPCPR uh, this year. Um, and I'm actually smoking the uh, the Family Reserve um, torpedo, which uh, I believe we're going to give some of these away a little bit later in the show. So everybody hang out and uh, wait for that. But um, and we had a review go up today for the uh, the white label. Um, and Seth, you're smoking the 19th hole, so we've got a, a bunch of different stuff that we could talk about. But uh, give us a little bit of background on uh, on the company and you know how you guys got started in the industry. Um, I I actually the the company we started in 2011 as Cordoba Morales. My family's been in Nicaragua making cigars for about six years now. And uh, going back in Cuba, uh, about 100 years, my family has been growing tobacco and making cigars, uh, mostly grown. It was the business of my grandmother and my grandfather on my mother's side uh, in San Luis, Pinar del Rio. That's what they used to do, uh, grow tobacco, prepare, ferment, and everything, get it ready to send it to Havana to the factories to be rolled. Um, you can say a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so we started three years ago in Nicaragua. Uh, as he mentioned, his cousin makes cigars, but for other people. And we decided to take it on and put on the name of his grandmother and owe to her and all her great work. And uh, she taught him how to roll cigars and all that good wow. jazz. Yeah. <laughs> I've been rolling cigars probably since I'm like seven, eight, eight years old. You've been rolling cigars since you were eight years old? Yep. And smoking since I'm nine. 
So that's I'm, that's that's a good head start on everyone else. And I'll yeah, tell you one thing. I think so. That's uh, I mean we've heard uh, like fourteen and fifteen, but eight. That's uh, eight and nine years old. That's. Uh, no, sometimes I'm rolling cigars at events and people ask me how long you've been rolling, and I'm like. 25 years, and they look at me and they're like, but you like like 35, and I, yeah, I've been running since I'm eight, nine years old. So. <laughs> so, Seth, we were playing with Legos, and they were rolling cigars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a boss. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just goes to show you how little we are. It just, I feel like I wasted my childhood. <laughs> but, you know, but now that you mention it, I'm thinking Legos, and I'm like, I, I'm now of the age I haven't done this where I could build Legos and smoke cigars, and that would just be 15 times better than it used to be. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, so, I secretly want to buy like the Millennium Falcon and build it out of Legos. Yeah, I know. I, I just don't know how my wife is gonna would deal with that because it's like 300 bucks or something. They're really expensive. We anyway. can split the cost. You could build it, then disassemble it, then I could build it. Okay, it sounds we'll like move a deal. forward. We'll you move forward. For, you could pay for shipping. Um, so your your grandmother had fields in Cuba for. Many years. For many years. Uh, and she, came, and she remained down there. She, she actually life. passed. She, yeah, she passed away when I was uh, nine. Okay. So my uncle in Cuba now is the one that took care of the little fields that they have left because my grandmother used to have like around 100 acres and the family now has less than 10. Oh. It's been hard oh, wow. to, to other people, you know? So your uncle still takes care of them in Cuba? Yeah, and I still have at least three, four family members that roll cigars in factories in Cuba, and uncles and cousins that work the the oh, farm. Wow. wow, that's very so. It must be interesting having some of the family in Nicaragua and the other family in Cuba, and I mean, you get probably get to play around with tobacco and smoke a lot of different types of tobacco from time to time. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Rocket. Yeah. Rocket. <laughs> Sometimes I'm lucky enough to get some leave that a family member brings in a suitcase or something, and we do some stuff in Nicaragua with uh, Ecuadorian, Nicaragua, and Cuban. Yeah. We don't have to do that. That's fun stuff. So you're so you guys are based out of Esteli though now, right? You're rolling in Esteli. Yeah, Esteli. Okay. Uh, the company is based out of Orlando. Yeah. That's where we live. But the, the cigars, 100%, everything made in Italy. And, so and who's factory? I'm sorry, go ahead, Rob. No, after you. Keep going. I was going to say, what is this your cousin's factory in Nicaragua? Yes, he, he started a factory like around five years ago, a little bit over five years ago, grow a, a little bit in a, the next couple of years. He, he started making cigars for, for Torano, and, and it grew from there. The name of the factory is uh, American Caribbean Cigars. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Wow. This box is right here. Look at that. You really were. It's really just boxes back there. That's great. <laughs> yeah, so uh, boxes full of empty boxes of the uh, Cordoba and Morales. Empty boxes are good. That means that they're sold and they're out and they're they're out in the market. So that's where you want them to be. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Z, when we talked a little bit at uh, IPCPR. Um, it touched on the uh, the overlap between uh, your cigars and golf. You used to be a golf instructor, is that is that right? Yes, uh, it, it, you know, I try and I didn't get nowhere. So uh, <laughs> living in Orlando, there is golf courses at every corner here, and uh, I started working for Disney Golf. Well, Disney World had like five golf courses here. And I started working there, teaching and playing in the weekends. Still only play mini tours. It wasn't, you know, nothing big. But I had a lot of fun and had six years. I put six years with Disney, teaching golf and playing golf every day, smoking cigars. And that's how the idea of having a couple of cigars that would uh, be named, or, you know, with golf names and all that. I thought it was a really cool idea. And that's actually how I started, you know, selling cigars and a few of the Disney courses, and then everybody liked them. From there, I did the, we did the Family Reserve blend, and we started making boxes of 20. Because the first cigars we did, they came in a little coffin with two cigars, and it was a front nine and a 19 hole. And I also included a ball marker there, and we used to sell it in the in the pro shops. That's how that's we got started. That's a great idea. 
<laughs> That's a great idea. Um, <laughs> I mean, I would I would walk into the to the pro shop and I would buy one. Um, and before I went and tore the tore the course apart, you don't want to see me. Uh, I, I pretend like you I know. can. Oh god, it froze a little bit, but. Ah. Oh, that's, yeah, we're having some some connectivity issues, but we're gonna power through it. Okay. Uh, so uh, <laughs> so I'm actually smoking the, the family reserve. Now that's the first you said that was the first blend that you guys worked on that you came out with. The third one. The first, oh, the third one. First one was the front nine Connecticut. Oh right. Okay. Second one was the 19 hole Maduro, and this was the third one. Okay. So yeah, I'm I'm smoking this one. Um, I was gonna smoke the white lady. Read John's review and it was he said it was a full full body with a lot of spice and I wasn't I wasn't in the mood for anything full body with a lot of spice but this one's got a fair amount of spice to it as well um, Ecuadorian uh, Habano wrapper uh, Nicaraguan binder and filler um, a lot of spice up front but uh, but it's it's got there's a smoothness to it that I don't I don't normally normally say that a cigar is spicy but smooth at the same time but um, this one is it's got a nice flavor to it I'm enjoying it. And Seth, you're working on the 19th hole, right? I'm loving this 19th hole. It's a really nice Maduro. This, it's just, it's smooth, but it's very rich and filling. It's, it's, it's kind of this old classic Maduro. It's not like a kill you Maduro, but it definitely has those Maduro qualities to it. Yeah, I like people, a classic Maduro. People are uh, intimidated when they first see the 19th hole and they think it's going to be a bomb, but it's, it's yeah. funny to pack in there. And yeah, uh, it's. <laughs> and, and it's got a dark, dark wrapper on it. It is. I mean, but it's, you know, Ashton Maduro was the same way. If you've ever smoked an Ashton Maduro, you see him, you're like, oh, my gosh, the thing's going to be a beast. Then you smoke it, it's just very nutty, very smooth, very rich. Um, this is the same way. This is very nice. Now, the 19th hole, that's golf lingo for the restaurant, isn't it, or the clubhouse or something along those lines? After you finish with the 18th hole, if you go to the 19th hole to drink a beer and a smoke a cigar. Hopefully, <laughs> and then and for me, I sit at the 19th hole for about 20 minutes, tallying up my score because it takes forever to count that high. <laughs> Carry the one. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> carrying something. It's uh, it's it's <laughs> it, it could be pretty savage getting out there, but um, so let's uh, I'm gonna we've got a few minutes before our first break. Um, so we we talked a little bit. You know what? There, someone asked a question here, um, and I'm gonna find it. And it was the uh, what is it? We talk about cigars and golf all the time. And okay, yeah, it was actually with Steve Wagner. And he said, "What makes golfing and cigar smoking such a natural pair, in your opinion?" Uh, actually, uh, this is gonna—I mean, pretty basic, but it's, in my opinion, it's one of the few sports that you can you have enough time to play around and. Do something else, like smoking a cigar. You know, a round of golf probably takes you anywhere from four hours to four and a half hours. If it's in a busy uh, course where there is a lot of people playing and you cannot fly through it, so I played two hours before, but that's still enough time to smoke a cigar. Mm -hmm. But if you play a, a normal round of golf in a, in a busy course, is four hours, four and a half hours. You have enough time to uh, smoke a couple of cigars. You in the middle. Of nature, uh, if you have something just to put it down when you tee off, or you can also have something in the car to hang it in there, you know. I think it goes perfect. I don't know too many other sports that you can, you know, other than maybe bowling or uh, pool. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you smoke inside, you know. But uh, out there in the in the golf course, you, like I say, surrounded by nature, and uh, a cigar goes perfect, you know. Yeah, there's, there's something peaceful for me uh, about being on the golf course and just kind of cruising around. I just played in a tournament uh, a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> and it was it was about 103 degrees outside. And <laughs> we're walking around, and I'm sweating to death. But there's still something that's that's peaceful about it. And for me, you know, adding that cigar to the mix, uh, it just kind of adds that just that just a little bit extra to it. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not the guy who's drinking beers or uh, cocktails or whatever on the course that's never been my thing but uh, I, I will be one that's I'm quick to fire up a, uh, fire up a cigar when I'm out there that's for sure 
I wish I had the liver for it. I can't, my tolerance, I, have, I can smoke a cigar, but I can't drink if I want to have a chance of breaking 100. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I saw you. You've got, a, you've got a beer going or something there. I saw a little bit. Oh, yeah. uh, we got a uh, La Fin du Monde. Oh, that's oh, really yeah. good. Gosh, that's a great triple right there. <laughs> what are you doing? Cheers. <laughs> you know, I I see that I see it all the time, but I've never I've never actually had it. It's really good. Is it really? No, I'll Rob, I'm lying to you. Yes, oh, it's okay. good. Buy some, man. I'll have to check it out. I always see it. I've got a a, a couple of liquor stores near me that are that have a really good beer selection, and I always see that particular bottle, and it's always in the the bigger bottle, the 24 ounces yeah. or uh, or whatever it is, and and I never pick it up for whatever reason, but I'll have to check it out. That's, that's, that's not a big bottle, Rob. That's a normal size bottle. <laughs> well, it's a big bottle for me. How about that? <laughs> okay, there you uh, go. So we're going to talk a little bit more about cigars on the other side of this break. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world the Armed Forces Radio Network. Uh, we're here with uh, Cordoba Morales Cigars. you got the big tuna sitting in for Logan. At some point, you're gonna to have to tell me what the big tuna, what the deal is with that. But I'm gonna remind everybody: this next segment is brought to you guys by uh, Cigar Federation and Project Manana. We've got, I think, we're down to like the last 48 hours of our Project Manana fundraiser, um, raffling off a ton of prizes. Uh, just go to CigarFederation.com. You'll see the big banner right there on the front page. You can't miss it. Raffle tickets are 10 bucks, and then we've got prizes from everybody from Drew Estate to crowned heads, and there's a, a trip, I think we're, we two or three trips to uh, to uh, the Dominican to go down and tour some factories and, and hang out with uh, some of the Project Manana kids and see where the see where that money actually goes. So it's really good, uh, a really good thing that we're doing. We've done it a couple years in a row, and I think we're a little bit short of our goals. So uh, go to CigarFederation.com, click on that banner, and uh, get in on that raffle. Uh, okay, Big Tuna, what do you got? What do you mean what I got? You got some pretty sweet bracelets. I just saw those pretty sweet. You're all decked out, man. You got the bracelets going, and you're drinking out of a big bowl. Like what? What's your it's, it's I it, dude. It's my it's my Tibetan tea bowl, and dude, these are my Tibetan Tibetan beads, man. It's my prayer beads. We're not gonna get into that, man. Right now, we're talking about cigars. Don't change the subject. <laughs> no, I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, we've got, uh, like I said, we're here with uh, Cordoba Morales. Um, we've got a bunch of questions. Uh, here from the audience, and I'm just going to start going down. There's one here from uh, <clears throat> from Irate Base. I always I always get his name wrong, but um, I think this is an interesting question. Uh, um, now, I, I didn't actually didn't ask this off air. I'm assuming you guys are married, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, so so uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't an inappropriate question by any means. Uh, so <laughs> you're married, right? So the question the question is. Who? I mean, obviously, uh, Z, you've got the um, the the cigar background, and now, how was it? Was it an easy transition getting your wife involved in the company, or was it something that she was open to? Or, I mean, for me, whenever I'm smoking a cigar, my wife usually goes inside, although she's the one who bought me my first cigars to begin with. But um, so, how how did that transition come about? <clears throat> I'm gonna let her. <laughs> tell you a little bit, but one thing I'm gonna tell you, I tell everybody, oh Lord, and it's not like my grandmother told me when you find a wife, if your wife doesn't enjoy your cigar, change your wife. <laughs> Stop it. She only had one choice. Oh Lord, whatever. No, he started. Uh, we start, I started going to uh, our local cigar bar, and I enjoyed the smell of it. But you know, I would take a few puffs here and there and be curious. Of of course, you know, being a newbie, it was a little too strong for me at the time, what my husband was smoking. So I started the flavor route first, and I did that for like about a year. But then I outgrew, and I started developing my palate, and now I like medium to full body thick. So I always recommend, I also work at a cigar shop, by the way. So when I have females that come in, or, you know, the husband that wants to pick out something to get to entice the wife, I, I start out with the little flavored cigars first, and, uh, and start from there. I call it like the fruity drink of cigars with the umbrella. That's, that's what I call those. You start that's off there, you drink, and then you go up to scotch. So that's where I'm at now. I'm enjoying it. It's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the gateway cigar. Yes. <laughs> Somehow with the drinks, I never left the fruity drinks. I still drink those. I don't, I don't, you okay, know, I just never left them. There's, there's, okay. something about, there's something about a cocktail that's got an umbrella in it that really turns me on. 
I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's something about an Apple Teeny that just makes my life complete. <laughs> you look like so. an Apple Teeny guy. I don't know what that means, but I, I would I guess. <clears throat> They're just throwbacks. tasty. You throw back some of the Apple Teenies. That's funny. So, so when it comes to the, the blending side of things, are you guys both involved? Um, I'm more inside of like uh, quality control, and I'll 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 try out the blends, and if I don't like it, he he trusts yeah. my palate at this point. I I do trust her palate. Because you blend and and think it's great and give it to ten different people and and they can give you really good input. They don't have to be, you know, the, the aficionados or anything. There is people out there with great palate, and I know a few of them. So every time we do something, I, I give them around and try to get uh, feedback to always try to do something better. And Emil is one of those. You know, she sometimes we've done something and she say, no, I think that's off. And you know, when I try and I try and I try, and my cousin and my, everybody, uh, yeah, I think she was right. You know. So. <laughs> That's that's pretty cool. Like that's that's this is unique. I, I don't I don't know that I, I know of any other relationships or have seen any other relationships like this uh, in the cigar industry. So that's that's uh, that's a pretty cool thing that you guys got going. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Seth, I'm gonna keep going down these questions. Feel free to jump in whenever you want. No, these are good questions. <clears throat> no, I, I just don't want you to feel like you know um, you're being uh, ignored. No, I'm not. I, I know I can just interrupt any time. Yeah, I don't know. So. yeah, you 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 do take after Logan <laughs> what, that what, way. What type of Maduro wrapper is it on the 19th hole? I know you say that's a that's a broadleaf Maduro. Okay, uh, I from, thought it was from Ecuador. Yep. Okay, yeah, because they are growing broadleaf in Ecuador. It's just no one really talks about it. Yeah, when we started the blend three years ago, I used another another wrapper. It was a Habano. Maduro, but then uh, this rubber is, in my opinion, has a good. Uh, it's, it's thick enough that it would uh, not only mature and get uh, to the color that you really want it, but it is strong. And then the cigar actually, sometimes with, with my bigger ring gauge cigar at the beginning, the rubber would split here and there. But this yeah. one, it's, it's, it's been really good using this rubber. And, and and it's one of those things that not all not all the leaves can really not all seeds can really do well as wrappers because you're right it's just it, they'll stretch they'll crack they just don't do well with it so but this Ecuadorian broadleaf I mean you can tell this is a thick leaf but it's really tasty yeah some sometimes I like you say you we have a wrapper that is awesome to make a lancero or yeah or petit corona but if you take it to the bigger sizes you know it, is not strong enough. Not thick yeah. enough. So since uh, I got a little follow up there, since you mentioned bigger ring gauges, <clears throat> that's always a conversation that we have here, and I, I think this might be a first. <clears throat> excuse me for the show. Uh, John Randolph says I love big ring gauge sizes. A uh, big ring gauge size cigar. Normally we get uh, our, our side of the crowd is on the Coronas, <laughs> Lanceros, and things like that, but. Uh, John likes the big ring gauges. He says, do you have any of the bigger ring gauges? And uh, if you do, uh, maybe give him a rundown of the cigars you have that are available in a bigger ring gauge size. Yeah, actually, the 19 hole comes in a... My biggest ring gauge is 6x60. Six, six okay. Uh, yeah. I to get that out, you know, because uh, to be honest, for me, it's really hard to blend anything bigger than that. We, we try, and it's never balanced enough. And there might be people out there who can do it, but... I haven't enjoyed any cigars bigger than that. So six by sixty, we have it in the Maduro, in the family reserve, uh, also six by sixty. And just recently, I did uh, my first batch of Connecticut front nine six by sixty. Okay. Oh, wow. I, I the Claude, the white label that you, that you guys reviewed today, mm -hmm. actually comes in three sizes: robusto, toro, and toro gordo six by sixty. But it is box press. Okay. Well, it, that was actually going to be <clears throat> your your one step ahead of me. That was the next thing I was going to bring up. Uh, that's the new release. The um, I want to make sure I say this right. The Clave Cubana. Uh, etiqueta. Oh, etiqueta. Uh huh. Perfect. Oh, that was pretty good. Etiqueta Blanca. So 
Give us a little bit of information on that one, because that's a new release that just came out at IPCPR, correct? Yeah, a little bit. I'm going to get a book so we can, because I know there's a lot of questions. Oh, okay, so uh, this is, sorry, <laughs> this is five-year-old aged uh, San Andres Maduro wrapper. Uh, inside is all Nicaraguan, and we also have from the region of Ometepe, which is a volcanic uh, area, if people aren't aware of where Ometepe is. So it gives it a... It's, a, it's an awesome freaking stick. I love it. It's very full body. A lot of people, <laughs> it's full body, but balanced also with the flavor. Also, we don't we don't like some cigars just for the sake of them being, you know, droppy on your butt. There has to be some flavor behind it as well. Um, and so, you want to go in with the? And I know, uh, Rob, that somebody was. I read the question. He wanted to know <laughs> what what was the the musical notes. Yeah. Do with the with the cigar, and last year. At the show, we uh, presented this cigar. We watched the the original Clave Cubana, uh, and it actually has a CD inside of Cuban music. Oh, cool! Original Cuban music, actually recorded by a friend of mine who's a three-time Grammy Award-winning musician, and uh, all original for this box. It's not like you can buy it anywhere else. Huh. So. Oh, yeah. when, Clave is the two mu musical instruments, the wooden stick that in Latin music they hit each other and they made the pop, pop, pop. It okay. all the music, you know, it's like what keeps the time in music. Yeah. Actually, Clave sometimes look like cigars, you know, to look like two cigars. Yeah, well, there's a little hollow. I used to be a percussionist, so I know all about the, uh, the claves. I played a little bit of percussion too uh, growing up. I played drums and timbales, conga, congos, everything. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So when when we did this one, uh, this wrapper that I used for this, the first clave, and I don't think I'll be able to get it again. It was a really unique Criollo wrapper, uh, Criollo '98, and it was uh, very limited. We only did a thousand boxes of ten cigars, and we we wanted to do something for the next IPCPR with the net same name, but we changed it to the white label because it looked really good with the San Andres Maduro wrapper and we wanted to leave the whole theme everything like that and actually this wrapper I'm going to have every year so I can actually release a new cloud every year. Uh, oh okay, cool. Uh, so that's why we went with that. So, so are, you, are you a big fan of the, yeah shut up Rob, are you, uh, <laughs> are you a big fan of the uh, San Andres wrapper? I am but it is a really tricky wrapper to blend. It is. People think because it's so good and so flavorful, you put anything on there and it's going to be a great cigar, and it's not. No. Uh, they're, either, they're either good or they're bad. Yes, and they're really bad sometimes. Yeah, so, thank you, because you're on cause it's you. that needs to be said. And a lot of the times, they're also box pressed, too. Yeah. Do you yes. think the wrapper does well, better press than it does just in a regular Parejo? Or? I, I actually, I tried them both ways, and... Probably, to be honest, next year I might do a Clave round, you know? But yeah. the wrapper, and the, like we were talking earlier, is so thick and, and strong and beautiful. You can really press it and it looks really good, you know? So yeah. That's why I guess a lot of people uh, box press. I also want to do a round one, but to start the, the first edition, we wanted to do a box press because it, it's a perfect wrapper to press. Uh, but... I was talking to one of my idols and a good friend of mine in the IPCPR, Ernesto Carrillo, about, and I want to share that with you about how hard it is to blend that rubber, and you have to be really careful what kind of binder you put so it will complement each other and not fight each other. And it's not, it's not that easy. You know, it looks really good, and a lot of people think, they, like I say, I'll make a, a cigar and put San Andres. I, I got some San Andres, you know, it's hot. But I'm not saying mine is good. You guys got to try it, but I, I think we did a good job. <laughs> it's, I mean, it is it is a tough wrapper. I know there, there's, you know, one, one manufacturer right now who's I'm close with, he's working with it, and, and it's just tough to work with. Um, you know, I just smoked the Sindicato Maduro by uh, Cas Fernandez and Sindicato, which is that Mexican San Andres in the 6x16. It was very good there. I mean, they did a good job with it. But there's a lot of people who just don't really do a great job with this. Just it turns out bland. Yes. Yeah, there's. I'm sure there's a little bit 
of eagerness to work with that rapper because it has been so popular over the last what three or four years. <clears throat> for uh, you know, everybody wants to get a blend with that rapper on it. And and Seth, like you said, sometimes it works. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, and uh, it, it's it probably seems simple to everyone out there because it seems like it's an abundant leaf. There's a lot of it around. Everybody seems to be working with it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy to work with. Um, we'll get into a few more audience questions, wrap this up on the other side of this break. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Cigar Chat, brought to you live at CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world, the Armed Forces Radio Network. We're here with uh, Cordoba Morales uh, Cigars and Big Tuna sitting in for uh, for our traveling man, Logan. Um I don't even know where Logan is. He's just running around chasing babies and doing all kinds of weird stuff. But Who cares? Uh, yeah, who cares, exactly. Um, the show seems to run a little bit more smoothly without him here. There's, uh, it's I don't just, know. It's it's, more, you know. Maybe it's more welcoming. Is that it? You know what it is? It's just better. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just better. Don't, don't, don't try to dissect it. Just roll with it. Um, you can quote me on that. <laughs> I will. I will, and I'll, I'll share that with everyone. Uh, so, like I said, we're here with Cordoba Morales talking about uh, you know some of the new blends and, and a few different things. Um, so it looks like uh, we've got some questions about how can people get a hold of your cigars. Um, it looks like you guys are, are pretty uh, – are around in a lot of the places in Central Florida. Um, is there – do you guys – are you available online? Do you guys sell online anywhere? Yes, uh, Cigar Hustler. Okay. And okay, yeah. uh, old-time cigars – both here in Orlando, they have the whole line on, okay. on the online store. So you guys can find them online there, and there's a lot of people asking. They want to try some of your stuff. Um, let's see. I'm going to go back through some of these questions here. You guys, I mean, we covered a lot of this stuff already. Um, <clears throat> so of the uh, – okay, this is a good question. So how, how, have, how has your line grown – other than, I mean, obviously you've added cigars every year. Uh, how has your line grown over the last few years? What uh, what trends and things do you see in the industry that are kind of shaping your company for the future? Um, it, our company has grown like from two cigars to now we have six cigars. We have the – I'm not going to count the, this old cloud because it's almost, you know, yeah. Done. I'm not going to make any more, but we have the Clower, the Pure Pinar, the one that I, I sent to you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those, most of them were Pure Pinar. And that was a cigar that I did at the, uh, the November, December last year. And it's my like my entry level. It sells for 650 to $7. Okay. And it only comes in two sizes, uh, Torpedo and Toro. And... It's the first cigar we we done that that we use fillers from other countries, not just Nicaragua. We put a little bit of Dominican, uh, and actually a ligero leaf from Pennsylvania, USA, oh. and it has the Nicaragua and Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. It's a uh, I would say uh, medium at the most, but it has a good flavor, and I think it's a good, Good deal for you know for six fifty seven bucks. Yeah, it's it's nice to have something in that price point because, I mean, we get spoiled. Uh, and Seth and I, I mean, I'll, I'll speak for I'll speak for myself. I get spoiled because I feel like I'm always smoking the new stuff and um <clears throat> and the, but the price point on some of these things now it just gets so outrageous. But to find a, a good quality cigar in that six to seven dollar price point, it's always nice to have that in your portfolio. Um, of the blends, I mean, excluding the white label, uh, what's been your best seller to date? Uh, the Family Reserve Habano is actually uh, been the best seller of the line. Other than the last six months, I, I we've been seeing the Maduro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. I, can, I, can, I can see that. That's a good Maduro. Uh, I mean, I, I don't see cigars okay. with that. Golf names and maybe some people thought, ah, that's just a gimmick or a joke, or you know, I don't want to smoke a cigar that would name like that, whatever. But I think people are paying more attention and seeing that we are doing this because we love it and 
think we know what we're doing, even though we learn every day, but the names had nothing to do with the quality of the cigar, you know? So the Maduro has been cashing up big time. Yeah, I can I can see why the Family Reserve, that's one I'm smoking <clears throat> about halfway through. Um, I can see this hitting a lot of different palates. I think it's got uh, it's got enough kick to it and enough spice to it to to satisfy that quote unquote modern palate, like a smoker like Logan who likes the big powerful stuff. But there's a lot of nuance to it. There's some creaminess to it. There's a, a smooth factor in there as well, um, where I can really see that this is gonna this is the type of cigar that a lot of different cigar smokers will enjoy. Um, so when you when you it didn't surprise me that you told me that this is your best seller because I can really see that. It, it does kind of cross those boundaries. Um, <clears throat> so I got a, a kind of a, a long-winded question here from uh, from Mickey, um, but I think it's a good question. He says, uh, "I've read many reviews, and almost all of them praise your cigars, um, and they your reference to kind of one of the best kept secrets in the cigar industry." Um, he says, "Have you guys? What are you guys doing to get your name out there with social media and things like that? I mean, you know, interviews like this. Uh, what uh, what have you guys tried?" That you found has been most successful to help you get your name out there in front of uh, in front of cigar smokers. I think for now, at, at this stage in our company, <clears throat> social media has been a, played a big role. Mm -hmm. uh, our name out there, where, where we're not at at the moment. Um, I'm the one that's in charge of social media for uh, the Instagram and the Facebook, and a lot of people assume it's oh hey dude oh hey brother, and I'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have. <laughs> More following on Instagram than we do uh, Twitter. Is I'm not a big fan. I'm trying to gain my following there, but I, I usually just Instagram out everything from there. It does it automatically to Facebook and uh, and Twitter. Um, and so that way, a cigar hustler and old time cigars, which are you know here, have seen a lot of requests go up for our cigars out of the state. So that's that's good and reassuring. Obviously, our next step would be to you know start advertising in the magazines which hopefully by the uh, beginning of next year we'll be able to start doing that. But for now, for the little guy, social media has, has played yeah. a role. <laughs> it, I looked at it since, since we started. I looked at advertising and magazines and all that, and they're good and everything, but when you don't have a big budget and you really want to keep making good cigars, my number one priority was having the tobacco. And I can say that I have, uh, we have a lot of tobacco, a lot of good leaf pilones resting there, and that for me is the the number one key, you know, because uh, that you cannot sell a cigar if you if you can make it, you know. So I wanted to grow little by little organically, and when I have a big, bigger demand, at least I can say I, I have the tobacco to make the cigars, you know. So that's that's, that's been you're planning ahead. I, it's you know it's funny, and it, it seems it seems so simple and basic from a business standpoint. Uh, but when you're dealing with something like tobacco, where it's a it's a finite, you have a finite amount of tobacco that, whatever the particular blend may be, if you're not planning five, ten years in advance, <clears throat> maybe you can only make you can only make that cigar for a few years, and you see a lot of companies come and go. But uh, I'm glad to hear that 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 doesn't sound like that's going to be something uh, that happens with you guys. Question here uh, in regards to uh, to some tobacco leaves. Uh, this is from a huge nerd. Um, <laughs> it's his name. He picked it. Um, he says the San, we were talking about San Andreas wrapper. He says San Andreas seems to be the next. It's kind of the big thing uh, over the last few years with the uh, for as far as wrapper leaves are concerned. Um, what other obscure or little known tobacco leaves do you think that we'll start seeing being used in the future? Or do you have anything maybe coming down the pipe that's going to use something a little bit different? Um. I would say my my favorite leaves that I, that I we have worked with, and everybody knows, but they're great is Ecuadorian Habano. Uh, but I, I have to say, there is a, a broadleaf Pennsylvania broadleaf wrapper that uh, we have some in, in Nicaragua now, and I know AJ Fernando is growing some. Uh, that that's pretty good. I, I tried it. It has an awesome flavor. Big leaf. Uh, beautiful leaf, uh, uh, and I think I think if I if I can pick one, I would say that Pennsylvania broad leaf would be something big in the coming years, like a Connecticut broad leaf. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's that's a good, it's a good leaf. It's a good wrapper. AJ does a good job of it. 
Uh, let's see. I'm going to keep going down with some of these questions here. Um, <clears throat> So uh, breaking into the market with so many uh, combinations, although you guys really came in with two uh, two different blends and, and you kind of worked from there, what's been the hardest part about uh, consumer marketing for you guys as far as you know getting that next step? I mean, like I said, you guys are <clears throat> you're present in uh, Central Florida. Uh, I mean, that's where you guys are based, so that makes a lot of sense. But it, what what are the 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 hurdles that you guys have to go over to jump over to get into that next level where you're you're available more widely throughout the country. I think uh, that's a hard, hard question. That's the, that's the <laughs> million dollar question, right? I can I can understand some of the retail retailers standpoint. Sometimes uh, they want you to do you know help them. When you have no name or you're not a big guy, you know what can you do for me, for me to put your cigars in people's hand? And I think that's easier to do when you have the retailers, like we did in, in Central Florida. We are around then, and we can go and visit. And if we do an event, I go and roll cigars, and people really enjoy that. And they already go calling me, hey, when are you gonna roll again? Because I really like the hand rolls you did at the event. And here in Central Florida, it's been easier, but to branch out. Uh, it's, it's tough, you know. Once in a while, you get people like uh, in the show. We met a, a couple from Michigan. They picked the line up, and uh, they've been reordering every three weeks. They say everybody loves the cigars. I wish more people give us that chance, but it's it's hard, you know. And I don't blame anybody for that. There is a lot of cigars out there, a lot of good cigars, and uh, it's a it's a tough thing. We just gotta travel more. Yeah, we we gotta get out there, like Mr. Fratello does. Oh yeah, our boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big guy. You know what? Yeah. If uh, we've had uh, we've had him on the show before, a really nice guy, and he is. If you follow him on Instagram at Fratello yeah. Cigars, he is all over the place. Yep, yep, he's sure. that, Well, that he's man. so big. I mean, he takes he takes two steps. He leaves the state and enters another one. <laughs> <laughs> guy's huge. Okay. Yeah, he's he's a he's a big guy. Um, so you guys had speaking of IPCPR, you guys had a great placement. You know, you were right over there by the food, yeah. so you probably got a lot of foot traffic. So, how uh, for you guys overall? How was the cigar accepted? Uh, I, yeah, actually, at this show, I think it's been our best show by far. This is our third show. We we were in Orlando three years ago. Uh, went to Vegas last year, and this year, it was the. We talked to the most amount of people. Uh, we wrote the most orders. Uh, all of the clients that already knew, they came and placed an order. They were, you know, waiting for us to try the new cigar. We sold the cloud, the new cloud, really good. So it was the, the best show by far. I heard from some people that it was a slow show, but you said it. I think we got lucky with the location, and for us, it was not that case. I mean. With some, two days, I didn't even went to lunch because I was so busy talking to people all day and and got into it. So when I look at the work, oh, we're gonna I'm about to get out. So yeah, we're, it was really good. We're happy. Hopefully, it'll be the same in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, was, you guys had you guys had a great spot. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I mean, that's how we found you guys when we were walking over. We went to go get the food. We saw you guys and came over and, and said hello. So. Um, that's good to hear that it was a uh, that it was a good show for you. Um, you know, we're we're just about out of time. And talk about time flying. Um, give everybody just real quick. Remind everybody where they can find you online, uh, where they can buy your cigars online, and uh, you know if they want to get in touch with you, how they can do it. Okay, so it's either cordobamorales.com or shorter C N as in Nancy, M as in Mary, cigars, C N M cigars dot com. Okay. And you can find the same thing: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. You can repeat it again, Cigar Hustler. Um, oh, for online that. purchase, yeah, Cigar Hustler and Old Time Cigars. Cool. Uh, their web. This is a good Madero. I'd recommend a lot of people picking this up. And I think if you know if, if you got some of these older smokers who've been smoking some of these more traditional Maduros for a while, and you put this in their hand, they'd really fall in love with it because it's it's really that type of cigar. It's a good stick. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Really glad you. Like it. <laughs> Good parting words from the tuna. Man, I like tuna. <laughs> I, I, I actually had a big tuna sandwich.
sandwich for lunch today. <laughs> and it was, I'm all over the place. Maybe it was oh, maybe it was subliminal. I knew that the tuna was coming on the show. And actually, the way you're talking about that Maduro, it sounds like something that I'd really enjoy. You dig it. I, I'm thinking you really would dig it. It's yeah. very tasty. Yeah, it sounds. I, I think I got one of those from you guys at IPCPR, so I'll uh, I'll fire that one up next. But guys, thanks for checking out another cigar chat. We appreciate the support. You can find us at cigarfederation.com. Uh, thanks to Seth from sethshumidor.com for sitting in for Logan. Um, guys, thanks for joining us again. Cordoba Morales Cigars. Appreciate you guys taking the time. And uh, everybody, look for those cigars online. You can find them at cordobamoralescigars.com. CNM Cigars on all your social channels, and you can pick them up. Cigar Hustler. And what was the other one? Old Time Cigars. Old Time Cigars. Okay. Thanks, guys. And we'll be back next week. Well, I'm not prepared. Usually Logan is the one who tells me who's coming up next week. That was Seth's job, and he dropped the ball. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was not part of my job description. We're going to be back here next Thursday with Crux Cigars. So I'm interested to talk Crux. to those guys, too, another, uh, another one of the newer companies on the market. So, again, thanks, guys. CigarFederation.com. Everybody stay safe and have a good week. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so that's that concludes the uh, AFRN segment. So now, normally Logan comes back and and uh, greets, swear. greets everyone at the barrage of swear words. So you guys can say shit or you know asshole or anything that you want now because we're not really we're not under any. Although I, you guys are, are uh, pretty classy people, I don't expect that you're gonna. Uh, <laughs> <Sometimes. laughs> thank you for thinking so highly. <laughs> Did I catch you off guard? Did I catch you off guard with the compliment? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Usually I love you first, so I have a sailor's mouth. No, okay. All right, so we've got, uh, you guys were very generous with uh, some cigars to give away. So we've got, I know we've got some of the Family Reserve that we're giving away, and we've also got, uh, what, are, what are the other ones that we've got? The Puro Pinar. Oh, the, the Puro Pinar. Are different sizes we're going to give away as well. So tonight... <clears throat> I'm going to pick six winners from the live audience, um, and I'm going to tell you guys how to win that here in a second. I'm also going to pick two winners from the podcast audience. So this is – we're going like SIGFED honor code here. If you're watching us live or you're you know, you're know participating live, you can't win from the podcast, so just don't even try. And I know your email addresses, so you're not going to win anyway. But uh, for the podcast listeners, we're going to pick two winners, five facts. Um, email me at rob at cigarfederation.com. And just tell me what cigar that I was smoking today and what cigar that Seth was smoking. So that's it. Just tell me those two things. Put Cordoba and Morales in the subject line and include your mailing address so when you win, I can actually send the cigars to you. Um, and I got a question. You got a question. Go ahead. When you The Puro Pinar, <clears throat> you know, the name, obviously, you're paying tribute to Pinar del Rio. You know your 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 birthplace. Did you did you blend that cigar to be, I, you know I hate saying it Cuban esque to really show that Pinar del Rio tobacco quality? Um, I would say it has a, maybe a, a little touch of uh, of Cuba, but the the idea about behind the cigar I don't know if you guys know this probably not, but in Cuba the the people everybody calls the their gueros. their father. Puro. So, okay. uh, like I call my, my dad, instead of dad or pops or whatever, in Cuba we call him Puro, and mm. Pura to mom, something pure. So it's, it, it goes for that. And I actually did that cigar just thinking of my dad, you know, Puro, and he's from Pinar de Rio, so Puro Pinar, Pinar de Rio. That, that was the what was behind it, naming it, Puro Pinar. Very cool. I had no oh, idea cool. that that was uh, that that was the term that was used. I didn't know that. I learned yeah. something. Another learned good something. another good question by the tuna. Yeah, you, you, you know that. you don't you don't say a lot, but when you do, you drop pearls of wisdom. It's awesome. When you see a Cuban somewhere and they're telling you they're from Cuba, grew up in Cuba, tell us, oh, what's puro? And they 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 chew to you. <laughs> oh, so that's kind of <laughs> like that's kind of like the, the litmus test of did you really grow up in Cuba? Yeah, I tell you, he's really from there. Oh, so we can call bullshit on people sometimes now. I like that. Yep. Yeah. I like that. We can call it's people kinda, out. It's kind of like the night. It's kind of like the nineteenth hole. You know, say, hey, I'll see you at the nineteenth hole later on. See where they go. <laughs> they know their golf lingo. <laughs> see where they end up. They're in, they end up in the parking lot. Uh, okay, so I never leave the ninth hole. <laughs> yeah, that's probably smart. I, I probably shouldn't either. Um, I'm but, just drinking my Lafayette Duval. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> 
I, uh, okay, well, and you know, you, you mentioned drinking. What uh, <clears throat> what are some of your favorite pairings? And we usually talk about this. With, uh, Yes, well, some of the best pairings that, pairing. that you've got with uh, you know some of your different blends. Um, uh, I like scotch a lot uh, with mm -hmm. anything or Macallan, Balvini. Mm -hmm. Those are my, my favorite too. But lately, I've been getting into good beer too. You know, there are so many good micro brewers out there. I guess it's like cigars. You know, a lot of people that I never heard of, and I try this the beer, and I'm like, wow from all over the place, you know. Sometimes I go to a big uh, liquor store, if you can call it a liquor store, right? A beer called Total Wine. I don't know if mm -hmm. you got that. Yeah, I got a Total Wine. I live two blocks from it. That's why I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I go there and I grab different beers that I never heard of and sometimes sit out here and, and try with the cigars and there is good pairings there too. I don't know a lot, of, a lot about beers, but I'm learning. Lafin. New Mon is a great pairing with with most you know cigars, especially those old Habano wrapper cigars. It does perfect. It's a great morning beer too. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to fix the hangover, right? <laughs> oh man, just to get the day going right. There's so. there's really nothing better than a good morning beer. Like I, I love morning brew, you know. <laughs> and Maybe I'm a lunch beer. A lunch beer is good too. Uh, lunch beers are that's. We, we, might have, we might have a problem. Beer is great too. We might have a problem. I, I don't know. No, you don't. You know why? You don't have a problem. You know why? Because you've accepted it. It's not a problem. <laughs> so now it's, it's just we part of my character. It's not a problem. We've accepted it. We live with it, and we roll with it. So. <laughs> no judgment. No judgment. Okay. No judgment. Hey, That's why I'm big tuna. I'm just drinking water here today, guys. That's it. So. Uh, although we do, uh, we do another show. Quick little plug. Uh, we do another show here on uh, on Cigar Federation called uh, Sharing Our Pairings, um, and we'll have another show. We're doing a show tomorrow, um, and we do different pairings, beer and, and wine, and we did some with soda and things like that. Um, and <clears throat> I found this beer, and it was it's a Canadian beer of all places, and uh, and I can't even pretend to pronounce the name of the uh, of the brewery because it's 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 French Canadian, so whatever. But the beer was called Aphrodite, and it's a chocolate stout that's brewed with vanilla beans. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I like it already. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and I'll have to uh, I'll have to check out what the the name of the the brewery is because I went down and I've got a liquor store. It's not uh, it's not like a big chain store. It's just a it's called Monument Liquors, and it's in kind of a questionable part of town. And I had never been in there, but somebody told me that occasionally they'll get Pliny the uh, Pliny the Elder in there from Russian River, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, which is really harder harder to find. Even though Russian River Brewing is like 45 minutes away from me, and I still can't find it. Um, but uh, they have at least 300 different beers in there. Uh, it's like you walk in, and it's like beer heaven. But uh, yeah, that was where I found that one. It's a chocolate stout brewed with vanilla bean. I went back and bought a few more. It's pretty damn tasty. Nice. So. Real quick, I need to do these giveaways because I know the, the weasels out there are, are chomping at the bit. So we're going to pick six winners. Uh, nothing fancy. Just email me, uh, Rob at Cigar Federation. Put uh, Cordoba uh, and Morales in the subject line. And actually, okay, just to see if you guys are paying attention, uh, what are the uh, Cuban terms of endearment for mother and father? Put that in there. And spell it right. And include all your information. So, and then Rob, I'll, uh, you, don't, you, you don't even know how to spell it. How are you going to know if they spell it right? Well, I'm gonna. we have a private chat here. I'll check and make sure that we spelled okay. it right. <laughs> I can spell it. I just can't pronounce it. And when I try to, and when I try to pronounce it with, with any sort of accent, I just sound like uh, a goofy white dude. So I just try to avoid it. That's how Catfish and I are getting with our one embargo show. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Let me make sure that we cleared up all these questions here. So... Was there anything that we you guys wanted to talk about that we didn't cover yet? <laughs> I think everything was. It was uh, it was everything you expected and more, huh? And more. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just looking through these questions. I think we pretty much covered everything. And and uh, you know one thing we talked about larger ring gauges. I know you also have some stuff available in smaller ring gauges. I've got the Family Reserve in a. Uh, in a Lancero that I'm going to review here pretty soon. 
Um, and do you are, is that a, a common a common thing, or is that uh, do you have all your uh, all your blends in Lanceros, or just a few of them? No, only the Family Reserve. Oh, um, just the one. But it's been my I would say it's been my hardest selling size uh, for the last year. Really? And it's a box of thirty. It's a big box. Wow. When we started, oh, wow. I, I didn't even make that many boxes. And it started going so good that uh, I just, I, I haven't gotten yet, but in my next treatment, I'm going to have some uh, Lancero in the Clave Cubana, the, the new Clave Cubana, black and white label with the Maduro and Lancero. So when I get some, I send you some for you guys to try. Oh, fantastic. For sale, yeah. It's going to be for me to smoke and give to some people, see what they think. Cool. So that might be something that we see in the future. But for now, it's you're just kind of doing a little test with it. So that's yeah. People always, it's we hear uh, conflicting things about Lanceros. I mean, in the uh, the online community, we're the we're the big time cigar nerds. We're the guys who who uh, who really seek that stuff out. The smaller ring gauges, the more classic sizes. Um, but uh, I've heard you know that uh, selling Lanceros in B and M's, a lot of companies have a problem with it. That sometimes they just don't move. But uh, it's interesting to hear that that's one of your best sellers. And, and I think it's because we're not that big, and most of the shops that we are in are serious cigar smokers, and and the owners really back okay. everything they they have there. And we have even stories where people have been selling our line and they didn't even want a Lancero. And I give them a cigar when they try, they're like, oh my god, this is so good. This is the best Lancero I ever had. I usually have problem with the draw, and they cut a couple. And they, I have to say, one of the things that we really have a, a, all the time put into is the draw. My, I hate to have cigars that are plugged. Sometimes yeah. I would say some of my cigars are on the easier draw than than some people like, but I, I just hate it growing up in Cuba, and the Cubans like to put so much tobacco. <laughs> Inside the cigars, and and sometimes it's a straw just to smoke a cigar, you know. Uh, so much around you, you can't draw anything. Do you like Do you like Do you like Lonsdales? Yes, I do. You should make a Lonsdale called the Big Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, man. Because not that many people make Lonsdales, and I'll back it. <laughs> I'll back. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get someone to make a cigar called the Big Tuna. Dave I love it. Hey, it it'd be like the oxymoron of the Alec Bradley uh, Texas Lancero. So then, exactly. Yeah. The big tuna. The Lonsdale. People are going to be like, what the heck? How did he get big tuna for a Lonsdale? <laughs> don't don't uh, tell nobody else. I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> do it. You should. I'm not going to say anything. I'm holding you to it. Well, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll edit this part out so no one will see it. <laughs> I'd, I'd probably I'd probably freak out if if you guys actually made a long <laughs> call called Big Tuna. I, I don't know what I would do. You're not saying that because you you trademark the name and then I'm gonna get a letter in the mail. The Big Tuna. <laughs> no, I'm not even clever enough to do it. So I'm probably the one who'd probably get a letter saying, "Hey, you can't use the term Big Tuna anymore." I'm like, "What? <laughs> I've, always, I've always been the Big Tuna." <laughs> well, just to echo that, uh, Lonsdale for me. <clears throat> That's one of my favorite sizes too. I don't know what what it it's is. A it, feels, size. it just seems like no matter what, I don't think I've ever had a bad one. And they're all different blends and all different, uh, you know, you know, all different origins. But something about that size, it, the the ratio of uh, you know wrapper to, to filler. I don't know what it is, and I'm not smart enough to figure it out. But something about that Lonsdale. No, but you're right. That that's a heck of the. There is a couple of sizes that I really love, and, and a four and a half by 42. There was a cigar oh, in Cuba that I used to talk about. That's an unbelievable size, and a lot of people don't. Great don't. size. And it's because, you know, in this country, a lot of people want to, you know, get the bang for the money. You know, if they pay yeah. $7, dollars they want enough tobacco. But that size, uh, the Petit Robusto, like four, four and a quarter by 49 or 50 is amazing, too. But yeah. A lot of people... <laughs> Don't do it, I guess, because of the market going big as you are. It is. I mean, and it's Lanceros can be great, but it's they're very it's tough because you get into that 38 ring gauge and you really have to good wrapper. You have to have a really good wrapper. But I think if you can get a cigar in that 42 to 46 ring gauge, where you're getting a Corona, Petit Corona, Lonsdale's Corona Gorda is a true one. You have a phenomenal cigar with it. 
It's true. You are 100% correct. Some of my favorite si sizes are there. <laughs> oh, yeah. 46. Another great topic by the tuna. <laughs> the tuna is killing. Nobody's killing it. Yes. <laughs> no, oh, my gosh. I love these guys. <laughs> no, one's Cuban, no one's Cuban like tuna. That's... <laughs> All right. Well, it, before uh, before your head gets too big to fill up the screen, I know exactly. I'm about, to, I'm, about, I'm about to I'm about to lose it. I'm using that one forever. You are about to lose it. Um, let me go through and just pick these winners real quick, and we can wrap that up. Um, I'm gonna pick. Let's see. I'm gonna just kind of go in order here. Uh, Rob Gibson. He uh, was one of the first. He was actually the first person to mail it in. Um, wow. By like. Wow, how did he get it in so early? He must have answered that question before he even asked it. <laughs> he had uh, the email ready to go. <laughs> yeah, he had, it, he had it ready to go, man. Okay, so Rob Gibson, big winner. Um, well, you know, I, I, I kind of have to reward this guy, Shooter. Every time, Shooter is always one of the first two or three people to answer the question. Uh, Shooter's a big winner, and he actually doesn't win that much. Um, so that's two. And then, let's see, Craig, uh, Craig Greenwood. Um, Punch Nubbit, he, he's a big winner, uh, and he got, uh, well, he didn't put the answer in there, but whatever, I already picked him, so he won. So that's three, and I've got three more here. We're going to pick, uh, we'll pick irate base, because I, I asked like three or four of his questions, um, and that's five, right? One, two, three, four, no, that's four. Um, we'll pick Steve Wegner, <clears throat> and, and Donald... Donald Cazaro hasn't won in a while, so there we go. Those are our winners. So you guys, uh, all the winners, the winners I just announced, email me again. Put winner in your subject title, and then give me your address. So we'll name those one more time. Uh, Rob Gibson, shooter. Uh, of golf, Craig Greenwood, uh, I rate base, and Dave or Dave uh, Don uh, Cazaro. Those are the big winners. Uh, so again, guys, email me again, Rob CigarFederation.com. And if you didn't win, come back next week because we'll have more stuff to give away. Um, so I think, you know, I told you guys to have you here for about an hour, and minus that little hiccup of the, the dual start, that was the false start on my uh, – that's five-yard penalty, by the way, false start. Um, you know, funny, a quick little funny thing. So false start in football, this is what the refs do, false start. And the first time I was watching a football game with my wife – uh, they did a false start, and the ref said this, and she's like, "Ooh, that's traveling," and that's <laughs> traveling. It's in the NBA. You do this, and I was just shocked that she even had any NBA knowledge. But uh, my my wife actually really knows her sports. But I was uh, I was kind of funny. That's always a funny story for me. I always give her a hard time. But anyway, it's total non sequitur, and I just threw it out there anyway. Uh, I got, I guess we'll just wrap it up, guys. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to hang out with us. Uh, it was a lot of fun. You you boosted uh, Tuna's ego a little bit. But, um, this, is, this has been amazing. This is the but, best night of this week. Gosh, this is great. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to hold it against you. Uh, and I definitely want to check out that 19th Old Maduro. I'm pretty sure I've got one of those. And, guys, if you Sorry, like uh, if you like uh, Ecuadorian Habano, a little bit of spice to it, Family Reserve, um, we're going to be sending some of these out to the winners. So check them out for sure. Um, really appreciate you guys hanging out with us taking the time. Thank you. And if you don't have the 19 hole, let me know. I'll mail you some. I, I will. Uh, you know what? I might fib and say that I don't have any because it sounds like something that I'm really going to like. And that's the first time I've ever hey, seen it on the show. <laughs> we'll just, it's we'll just a little fib. Um, but, no, guys, really do appreciate it. Thanks for being generous with the giveaways and everything. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, down the road we'll, uh, we'll have you guys on and we can talk, uh, you know, about some of the new stuff and how, uh, how the brand is growing across the country. Really do appreciate it. Definitely. When we get some more promo items and T-shirts and stuff or giveaways, we should do it again, and I'll send you some of those. That's great, guys. That's awesome. Seth, Tuna, Big Tuna, with the uh, the bracelets and the T-bowl. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out, man. Appreciate it. Um, Absolutely, this is wonderful. Always fun to have the Tuna on. He knows so much more about tobacco than I do, so it's it's actually kind of weird to have and or Logan. Actually, me and Logan combined probably. So it's kind of weird to have somebody on the show that's hosting that knows a little bit about what they're talking about. That's refreshing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little bit. Not only. <laughs> so yeah, take everything that we say with a grain of salt because you know, we, just, we just like to hear ourselves talk. But, this is true. 
yeah, you know, it, it happens. But guys, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Everybody, thanks for support of the show. We appreciate it. Cigarfederation.com. We'll be back next week. The Crux Cigars. Uh, everybody have a good week, and um, yeah, and be nice to each other. Have fun. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.